Welcome to my video on properties review and the distributive property. So before we learn a new property, we're going to review some properties that you should know from fifth and sixth grade. So the first one is the commutative property of addition. So the way I help my students remember it is commutative starts with CO, so that stands for change order. So changing the order of the numbers because adding does not change the sum. So we can change the order of the numbers and it does not change the sum. So here's an example using letters. A plus B equals B plus A. I changed the way the letters were arranged and no matter which way I add it, it's still the same result. So let's look at an example using numbers and I'm going to give you a challenging one. So I'm going to use multiplication but it's not going to be commutative of multiplication. It's actually going to be addition and here's why. Notice inside the parentheses I have 6 plus 2. Now look what happens when I rewrite it what happened inside the parentheses. So notice the 6 and the 2 changed order and what symbols in between them in addition sign. So that's why this is commutative of addition. Now, commutative of multiplication. Once again, change order. Change in the order of the numbers because multiplying does not change the product. So look at the letters. A times B equals B times A. I change the order, multiply them, it does not change the answer. So let's look at a more challenging one. So I'm going to use addition. Even though I'm using addition, this is still going to be a commutative of multiplication and watch why. Now notice, everything's in the same order except for the 6 and the 2. And what symbol's in between them? A multiplication. So since the 6 and the 2 changed order from the left side to the right side, that means this is commutative of multiplication. Okay, so there's our review of commutative. Now let's move on to our associative of review. Associative of addition and multiplication review. So associative of addition, I have PM here, so parentheses moves. So regrouping the numbers because regrouping does not change the sum. Okay, So notice A plus B is grouped together and C is by itself. And then here A is by itself and B plus C is grouped together. So I like to call this the dating property. So A plus B are dating while C is single. And now A is single and B plus C are dating. And now let me just use some numbers here. So let's say 6 plus 2 is getting added together, and then we add 3 to it. And then we have 6 plus 2 plus 3 in parentheses. So notice the 6 and the 2 are dating, the 3 is single, and now the 6 is single and the 2 and the 3 are dating. Okay, associative of multiplication, same thing, parentheses move. Regrouping the numbers because multiplying, actually, sorry, that's incorrect, don't write that, because regrouping does not change the product. Regrouping does not change the product. So look, A, B are dating while C is single, and now A is single and B, C are dating. So here's what it would look like with numbers. Six and then 3 times 2 in parentheses equals, now I'm going to, um, now I'm going to group 6 and 3 and leave the 2 out. Okay? Now, it's a little bit backwards of here. Here I put the 6 by itself and the 3 and the 2 in parentheses and then I put the 6 and the 3 and then the 2 outside. So it doesn't matter which way I write it. It can be 
the parentheses can come first or second. It doesn't really matter. As long as you're multiplying all the way through and you're regrouping um, one set of the numbers. Okay, so that's our review on associative. Now let's move to our identity review. Identity, we think adding zero, and we think of a mirror. Because when you look in the mirror, you see yourself. Okay, when the number looks at zero, it's like looking at itself because the number is still going to be the same. So, when zero is added to a number, the result is the same number. So our letter example is a plus zero still equals a. So let's substitute a number in here. We're going to say 4 plus 0 still equals 4. Okay, now we have the multiplicative identity where we're multiplying by 1. And once again, we think of the mirror. When a number is multiplied by 1, the result is the same number. So our letter example is a times 1 equals a. So let's put numbers in. 7 times 1 is still what? Good, 7. Okay, turn the page. And now let's look at our inverse properties. Okay, and when we have additive inverse, we think of opposites. So when a number and its opposite are added together, the result is always zero. So a plus negative a equals zero. So if I use numbers, let's say 21 plus negative 21, and it's going to equal zero. Now the multiplicative inverse, think of flip. When a number is multiplied by its reciprocal, The result is always 1. So a times 1 over a equals 1. We have 82 times 1 over 82 equals 1. Now, of course, it doesn't always have to be a whole number. I could have 3 fourths times 4 over 3 equals 1. Okay, But when it is a whole number, then the other one is just a 1 over that number. And the multiplicative property is 0 times 0. So any number multiplied by 0 will always equal 0. And it, the property is how it sounds. Multiplicative property is 0. You're multiplying by 0. So our letter example is a times 0 equals 0. So let's just use 2 times 0 equals what? 0. OK, now this brings us to the distributive property. And this is a new property. for you. So we look at the picture here and the picture illustrates the property. So let's look. We have candy and then the devil plus the ghost in parentheses and notice the distributive property takes the candy and it multiplies it by the devil and then it adds the candy multiplied by the ghost. So notice that candy gets multiplied by each costume. Okay according to the picture. So the distributive is when the outside number is distributed evenly. In other words, it's being multiplied evenly. It's being multiplied by both inside parts. So we have it where additions in the parentheses or subtraction. And notice the A gets multiplied by the B and the A gets multiplied by the C. So that outside number gets multiplied by both parts, whether it's addition or subtraction. So let's write an addition one. And we're going to use 3 times 6 plus 2. So we're going to take the 3 and distribute it to the 6. So it would look like this, 3 times 6 plus 3 times 2. And then the subtraction one, let's use the same numbers, 3 and then 6 minus 2. So the 3 has to get distributed to the 6, so 3 times 6 minus 
3 times 2. Okay, so the outside number is getting distributed evenly. It's getting multiplied by each part on the inside. So let's write it out. We have 7 parentheses, 4 plus 3, so we're going to distribute. So draw this arrow. We're going to do the 7 times the 4 and then the 7 times the 3. So it looks like that's 7 times 4 plus 7 times 3. Now, it would also be the distributive property if I just skipped this step and wrote 28 plus 21, because that's what these two parts equal. So you could see the 7 being multiplied by both numbers in the inside, or you could actually see the number that represents 7 times 4 and the number that represents 7 times 3. So be watching for that, too, when you're identifying the distributive property. Okay, now, the 5 is at the end, but that's okay. We're still going to distribute it to the first number and then the second number. So we're going to do 5 times 9. We always write the number we're distributing first. And then 5 times 3. Okay, now look at this one. This one's already distributed, so they want us to go backwards. So what number was distributed? The 10 was distributed to both parts. And what numbers were they distributed to? The 8 and the 5. And what operation separates the 8 and the 5? Good, an addition sign. So it's 10 parentheses, 8 plus 5. Okay, now, knowing and seeing the examples of distributive property and knowing what the distributive property is now, we need to find two examples that are not. So look here. Is this addition or subtraction in the parentheses? No. So this is not the distributive property. This would not work. This would not equal each other. Okay? So cross out A. Now, is this addition or subtraction? Yes. Did the 8 get multiplied by both numbers inside the parentheses? Yes. So this is not, I'm sorry. Let's go back to this. This is not an example of the distributive property, so I want to circle this one. I apologize. This one is the distributive property, so cross it out because I'm looking for not examples. Okay, look at this one. Is there addition inside the parentheses? Yes. Was the 5 distributed to both numbers inside the parentheses? Yes. So that is distributive. Cross it out. And is this one distributive? No. And do you know what property this is? This got multiplied by 1, and it still equals the same thing. Good, this is the identity. So this is not distributive, it's identity. Okay, now, we're going to apply the distributive property on the right side, and on the left side, we're going to follow order of operations. So we're always going to do the order of operations part first, and then we're going to do this distributive property over here. So notice I started out with 2 times 5 plus 4, and I added 5 plus 4 and got 9, because that's what order of operations tells me to do first. And then I do multiplication. So 2 times 9 is 18. Okay, now here's how the distributive property works. I'm going to take the 2, multiply by the 5, and take the 2 times the 4. So let's write down 2 times 5 plus 2 times 4. Now what is 2 times 5? Good, 10. And 2 times 4? 8. And 10 plus 8? is 18. So notice both sides will equal each other if you distribute it correctly. Okay, let's look at the last two examples. Okay, now this one, the 4, was already distributed. So we need to find out what two numbers it was distributed to. So it was distributed to an 8 and a 3. Now let's do the order of operations. So we're going to do parentheses first. So 8 minus 3 is 5. Then we're going to do our multiplication. 4 times 5 is 20. So when we distribute, we should still get 20. So 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 3 is 12. And 32 minus 12 is 20. So 20 equals 20. And the last one, order of operations says to do subtraction first, so 4 minus 2 is 2. We're going to multiply it by the 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Now this one, they only distributed the 6 to the 4, 
So now we got to go back and distribute it to the 2. So 6 times 2. Or I could use 6 dot 2. It doesn't matter. 6 times 4 is 24. And 6 times 2 is 12. And 24 minus 12 is 12. So 12 equals 12. Okay, that concludes our notes on properties review and distributive property. I hope you have a great day.